four. What are the projections at the point two, three, five on the x, y, y, z, and x, z planes? Draw a rectangular box with the origin and two, three, five as opposite vertices and with its faces parallel to the coordinate planes. Label all vertices of the box. Find the length of the diagonal of the box. So the first thing to do to unpack this question is let's just draw the coordinate planes. So we have the z, y, and x. And I'm just going to label these x, y, z, and their negative counterparts, negative x, negative z, and negative y. And so we're going to need to draw projections of the point on two different, on three different planes, the x, y, y, z, and x, z planes. So before I get into what a projection is, I just wanted to go over what the x, y plane is, what the y, z plane is, and the x, z plane is. So the x, y plane is when z equals zero. The y, z plane is when x equals zero. The x, z plane is when y equals zero. And now to get over projections, uh, predictions are a kind of complicated topic in uh, Calc 3. But the easiest way to think of them is as a light source and a shadow. So let's just give an example. So let's say we have a point, right, let's draw a point here. And let's say we want the projection of this point on the xy plane. So if you imagine you have a light bulb or the sun is casting its light rays on this point. And it's, keep in mind, since we want the xy plane, we want the light source directly above the xy plane, above this. So, we, so let's say, cast the shadow. We have this light source, and the shadow would be like this, and this would land on the xy plane, and this would be the projection. And notice in the xy plane, let's say this point was just uh, eyeballing. Let's say it's like two, four, three. X, Y plane would be two, four, zero. And you can do the same thing for the X, Z, and Y, Z plane, but your light source would be like this, or like this. It just, it would be perpendicular to whichever plane you're trying to find the projection of. So with that, we can find the projections of this point. Well, let's first, let's just uh, draw this point. Uh, two, three, five, so we go two along the x-axis, and then three along the y. We draw our parallel lines. And we go up. Draw a vertical line, and we go up five. One, two, three, four, five. So here's our point right here. All right. So if we're finding the projection on the xy plane, that's when z equals zero. So our new point would be two, three, zero. And this is just like the previous example where we had that light source up here and it creates a projection of this point down here on the xy plane. Well, the projection would be more uh, closer to 
over here actually, my bad. So if we're gonna plot this point, two, one, two, three, We have it right, this point right here. So now let's do the what the projection on the YZ plane. So this happens when X equals zero. So we have zero, three, five. And we can kind of visualize this, it's a bit harder. Let's say our light source was like kind of like here, perpendicular to the y, YZ plane. Well, you can't really draw it because it would be like out of this paper. But I'll, I'll, I'll try to draw it for the XZ plane. So let's just plot this point. Nothing on the x-axis, 3 on the y, then 5 on the z. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Alright, so for the final point, projection on the xz plane, so this happens when y equals 0. 2, 0, 5. So we would draw our light source kind of like over here, kind of like perpendicular to the XZ plane. And it would create a projection like kind of hard to draw over here. So if we draw this point, two, nothing on the y, and up five. And we need to create a box out of this with uh, parallel to the co coordinate planes. So we can just draw the segments of the box. Let's just start drawing, um, just attaching each of the points. And we can kind of see the shape of the box it's going to form. And then we can just attach it to the coordinate planes just so they're parallel. And if we're going to label all the vertices, this is uh, kind of time consuming. Two, three, because we have, what, eight vertices. All right, so we have two, three, zero, two, zero, 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 three, zero. This point back here is going to be zero, 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 two, zero, five. Zero zero five zero three five and two three five. All right. So we have to find the length of the diagonal of the box, and this happens from the origin to the two three five point. So I'm just going to draw that what the diagonal would look like. And the formula for the distance between points is basically the same thing in 2D. In 2D, uh, you would derive some type of equation where the distance would equal x minus x1 squared uh, plus y minus y1 squared. This comes from like Pythagorean theorem. And there's a similar, similar way to prove it for 3D. 
but most things in 3D can be built off of 2D, so same with this formula. So you get D equals X minus X1 squared plus Y minus Y1 squared plus, then you have the Z component, Z minus Z1 squared. So if the points we have are 2, 3, 5, and 0, 0, 0, we would have the distance equals the square root of 2 minus 0 squared plus 3 minus 0 squared plus 5 minus 0 squared. The d equals the square root of 4 plus 9 plus 25 equals the square root of 38. And I don't think you can simplify this anymore. So you have the square root of the 38 as the distance of the diagonal of this rectangle. And if you can't really see, see the box that well, I also plotted it in 3D so we can take a look at that. And you can, kind of, you can see it's basically the same thing that we had. And this, this distance of this segment is going to be the square root of 38. And our program says it's 6.16, which is the square root of 38. Well, exact answer is 6.1644. Then it continues. So there you go.